welcome everyone to another episode of our Sochi Spotlight program. I am joined today by Dr. Tatiana. Dr. Tatiana, thank you so much for being here today. How is your day going so far? Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Paulina, for having me. This is uh, uh, wonderful to connect with you and the Sochi community. I'm super excited to uh, connect today as well, Dr. Tatiana. We have some amazing content in store for everyone today. We were chatting um, already with Dr. Tatiana about uh, her experience um, migrating from a physical business to the online business. So I can't wait to share your story with our community as well. And without further ado, uh, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about who you are and who you serve? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Pauline, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so I'm Dr. Tatiana Habadova. I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist, and I have transitioned my 20 year brick and mortar practice uh, to the online space over the last couple of years due to the pandemic. Uh, and so a little bit of, of who I serve has has shifted and changed. So primarily now I serve women who are looking to banish brain fog and become cognitively unstoppable. So I help women uh, basically identify brain fog if they're having brain fog, um, not necessarily sort of like a transient brain fog. Sometimes we just had a poor night's sleep. Maybe we went out drinking a little bit. We feel like a little hungover the next day, you know, those so that's, that's, that's temporary. There's another type of brain fog that is a little more longer lasting. It seems to always be there, especially when you're trying to work on like memory or concentration, things like this. And uh, this is important that we pick that up because it can start to lead towards cognitive decline and, you know, unfortunately, Alzheimer's. Uh, so we want to be able to pick these things up early and help women become cognitively unstoppable, you know, live a very, uh, you know, powerful, strong, healthy, you know, productive life well into, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s and, and beyond. That's amazing. And I'm already seeing so many parallels between, uh, you know, managing brain fog and becoming that empowerful person uh, with online business. So you alluded to this inside your bio, Tatiana, just in terms of you've been a medical practitioner uh, for over 20 years now. And you mentioned that you did move some of your business over uh, to the online space a few years ago. Uh, what sparked that move? What, you know, encouraged you and spoke to you and told you to take your very well functioning, uh, very well performing medical practice and transition it into an online space. Yeah, great question. Uh, well, a couple of things I just want to first clarify. So I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a, a chiropractor. So I just want to make sure that nobody uh, gets confused by that. But I did have a, um, a, a chiropractic practice and basically a, a like a brain performance center. So I worked on a lot of uh, patients on neuroperformance and movement and things like that. So a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one and a lot of, um, you know, hands-on and, and, you know, being, you know, face-to-face -face and doing consultations, examinations, treatments, et cetera, things like that. So yes, it was an incredibly successful practice, uh, very blessed for that and grateful, had amazing patients and people I got to help over those years. And, you know, twofold, one, the pandemic hit. And I think that has affected many, many people, obviously on many levels and on the business level, I think many people did make the transition online, you know, technology and time was just getting to a place where um, I think it was needed, honestly, I think it was really needed that we kind of took that leap in and opened up another opportunity in the online space besides just sort of consumer shopping and things like that. Uh, but I was also getting to a place in my career where uh, you know, I was interested in online space for, for almost 20 years, honestly, and it was so challenging back in the day. Uh, you know, I consider myself somewhat savvy. I think I did pretty good in computer science back in high school, uh, <laughs> but it was still so difficult to put all the pieces together. And uh, I just got discouraged so many times. And when the pandemic hit, there was almost no option. We, we literally got shut down. Uh, we had to close uh, for several months and that basically brought business to a halt. And so immediately it was like, what to do? And fortunately, uh, Stu McLaren was having um, a training that he was doing. Uh, a very in-depth training and it was the first time I ever heard of Stu uh, really consumed all the content he went into super great detail about how to set up online memberships and and just how to navigate into the online space and I've sort of dabbled you know back in the day over 20 years you know attempting various things um 
And so I had a bit of a sense on how to navigate that. And I was like, this is it. I am never going to be in this position again. I had just turned 50. I, you know, worked very hard for my practice and I'm very grateful for what it was uh, in the brick and mortar space. But I was like, no way, I, I cannot afford to not create something now and wait 10 more years or when I'm 60 or 65 or 70 and then something like this could happen again. You know, I'm young, I have the energy, I have the, you know, keep my, my, my brain cells firing at this age, uh, you know, I have the opportunity now to do something. And here's a mentor who's basically laying it out for me. Um, I just got to follow, follow it and implement it, you know, consume it, understand it. And Steve makes it really easy um, in the community that he has, uh, you know, around the work he does is phenomenal. Uh, the people are incredibly helpful. So it was just so nice to have peers in this space. It was nice to meet new people from lots of walks of life and lots of different kind of businesses and serving lots of different communities uh, and lean in on, you know, lean into each other and to support each other. So uh, not only having the coach and mentor, having, um, you know, the community of the support and, and then, you know, roll up your sleeves and get going. So I realize I is so critical, not only to any brick and mortar practice to have an online component to their business profile, or for someone who wants to just not go back into a brick and mortar practice or start a brick and mortar practice, uh, and I have all that overhead and all that to create that online and to serve your customers. So I made the shift. I just, I leaped and I'm glad I did. It was a bit of a learning curve. I learned a lot and I'm glad I did. I've you know, needed to pivot and shift as I got to understand my niche more and how to connect with women who are experiencing brain fog and concerned about early cognitive decline, you know, how to connect with them in the online space. So that's different. I never did that before. I always connected with women in my office one-on-one. -on -one. So there was a lot to learn, um, but it's been very successful and I'm grateful for going through the initial hump, you know, and now I have this opportunity to serve, uh, you know, women and be able to help them in, in this capacity. So, you know, it's a leap of faith, but, you know, when you jump in and you believe, and obviously the technology is there and there's so much more support, you know, now, um, anyone could do it. So that's kind of basically how I got to it. And now I have friends and other health professionals, just because I'm mostly in that space, or other people that I know are that looking to go into online space come to me because they sort of been watching me over these last two years as I, you know, they see the journey that I've been taking, right? And now they're they're interested. They're kind of silent first, they're just sort of seeing what would happen. And I guess they can see that it's it's working and they want to know how they can do the same. So it's really exciting to see other people want to open up and I would highly encourage everyone to create some kind of online business component to their business, even if it's a brick and mortar practice or a brick and mortar business. Um, I think it's just necessary moving forward into the future. How inspiring, Tatiana, to hear about, you know, some of the challenges that uh, in many ways gave you no options to, you know, transition from the brick and mortar uh, industry into an online business. And it's amazing to see how far that leap of faith has already taken you. Uh, I believe you have more than one online business. Can you talk a little bit about um, what your first online business product was and how that's evolved over time into how many current online offers you have at this time? Sure, absolutely. So currently, I have three online businesses, so you can call, call me a serial entrepreneur. Uh, but the first one was really transitioning my practice from the brick and mortar practice into the online space. So that's called the Palm Beach Brain Center. And so now it's a virtual women's brain health clinic. Uh, and so that's hosted completely on a platform, you know, searchy, obviously. Um, and that is where I work with women in Florida because I'm licensed in Florida as a chiropractic neurologist. So I can help any women that are in Florida and take them on as a patient and help them through that journey of brain fog to being cognitively unstoppable. And so our main product there is called our cognitive, a cognitive vitality program. So it is a, a year long program. Initially, obviously we'll do an initial consultation and evaluation to see if someone is uh, the right fit for this program uh, to make sure that it, it's there, first of all, an appropriate candidate so that we can ensure greater success. Um, 
and then we will uh, support and help and treat them um, throughout that year process and all the cognitive domains needed, uh, assessing where they're at, doing regular brain health assessments and working with them, uh, you know, kind of in a well-rounded way. And in there, we have content libraries where we, uh, the patient will meet with myself or my team for their individual sort of follow-up sessions. Uh, but they also have a library where they can access tons of videos on things that they can do on their own. And we, of course, speak about that during the uh, program. We'll navigate them to different content as well and make that available for them so they could access that whenever they might have questions or want to verify things. There's a huge nutritional component. There's a huge sleep section. Uh, uh, so sometimes they might want to reference back to some of those videos. We also create in the Cognitive Vitality program, each patient has their own hub or a portal. Uh, so we're using the searchy hubs and that each patient has their own. So therefore, if we want to specifically put particular content uh, from the library, so we call it the vault, uh, into the patient's hub just for them, this way they don't have to go searching and looking everywhere, then this way they have sort of a personalized area of key uh, video content uh, trainings that we want them to have and or uh, when we're doing the follow-up, they're all recorded and that goes in there as well. So they have a whole history of all of their sessions that they've had online with us. Um, and then as well, uh, sometimes there'll be uh, times they'll email uh, in some questions. So sometimes it's just like little quick checks, or little quick things that they might call and we will create a little, a little mini video, a minute or two, just to respond back as an answer and send that back in. So. I, I hate email. I, I hate typing. <laughs> and so I am just better at giving a quick verbal uh, clarity to, to a patient. Let's say if they do email in a question about what, what should they, what supplements should they take or how should they change this or they're feeling this, what should they do, et cetera. So it's easier for me just to do a one to two quick little video and pop that into their portal. We call it portal, but it's really a searchy hub uh, for them. And that's the answer. And then they have the transcript there. So if they need to read it, I don't have to type it out. It takes me too long. I'm much faster verbally. Um, so that's how we're using the Palm Beach Brain Center searchy hub for the website, but then internally how we have the content library uh, that supports the program that is always being added to as we need to. And then each patient has their own hub for their personalized patient portal. So that's the Palm Beach Brain Center. <laughs> Uh, next. What in, okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. I, if you have a question about the Palm Beach Basin, so I'll move on to the other two businesses real quick. But um, that's that's that. <laughs> yeah. So maybe just one quick question, um, because you talked a lot about the practical application of Searchy in terms of creating a super robust Searchy hub for each client in order to serve them. And this was part of your transition from a brick and mortar business. Do you think that there's something that a virtual uh, health clinic offers that uh, maybe a brick and mortar clinic couldn't, for example? Uh, sorry, clarify your question. So, so is there something that the way I'm, I'm setting up my practice that a brick and mortar couldn't do? Um, I just found in, in, in practice, like previously in my brick and mortar practice, I didn't really have a lot of content available online for patients. So we went, might have had some handouts, uh, you know, printed something and, and hand it to them and things like that. So but there wasn't any sort of training videos. And what I found is I was spending more time with each patient because I had explained certain things. Sometimes you have to explain a little education. You have to app apply it, then they have a lot of questions. And that's great when there is that beautiful one-on-one -on -one situation. But a lot of things, I don't need to repeat seven, eight times per day to, to patients, right? So I became more streamlined and efficient in running my practice. And I think providing a higher level of care, because that's really what it's all about. It's all about making the transformations and having patients improve. Um, and so I didn't have to work as much. I could see more patients if I wanted to, right? Because I had more time available to me. Uh, the patient business didn't have to be as long. Remember, I am dealing with women who are experiencing brain fog and sometimes some have neuro fatigue where they get tired 
So uh, being on a half hour, 45 to an hour Zoom call can be exhausting and then they're done for the day. So that's not healthy and productive, right? So having smaller visits, getting right to the nitty gritty questions or things that we need to talk about and then directing them to videos that I don't need to repeat certain things over and over again. So, you know, I think a brick and mortar practice should do that too. I, I think being streamlined um, and maybe implementing that as well, doing one-on-one -on -one visits, uh, face to face with people and then having an educational library where you can, you know, um, supplement what you're doing. I do very, um, you know, white glove concierge style programs. So they're high level programs. You know, these, they're going to go from five to $10,000. So this isn't covered by insurance uh, because of just the, the comprehensiveness. So, you know, there needs to be support and resources and accessibility. Patients want data and information. And my patients are tired scouring the internet, searching Google for information they don't know if it's accurate or not, right? So if you can curate uh, knowledge in one's niche or niche, you know, uh, like I have done for my patients, then you just make their life so much easier. And, you know, you don't get burnt out as a physician, which is huge physician burnout is huge um and you can just serve people in a better way amazing thank you and i cut you off earlier so i'd love to hear about the third online business as well sure so um so real quick so the other two businesses uh so palm beach brain center serves uh women in cognitive health in florida where i can take them on as a, as a patient but i was also getting a lot of interest for women around the world who weren't in florida and technically i am not able to um you know consult with them or give them any medical advice because i'm not licensed in the other states right so that would be a violation uh to to my license but uh, what I worked on and met with many attorneys to make sure this is okay and how to do this correctly in the online space uh, is, again, curating an educated journey. So the other part of um, the cognitive health umbrella is, um, you know, the women's brain health side where I help women around the world just curating, um, you know, a process for them where they can then take that knowledge to their own physicians. I help them set up their teams, uh, let them know what type of physicians to look for, what type of questions to ask and, and arm them with knowledge and information, some that they can implement on their own, uh, basically information that they would have normally found on Google, but they have to spend hours looking for it and wondering if it's valid or correct, or is it the latest fad or whatever the case is. So that's sort of the, the part of the women's brain health uh, section, which I, I, I have a huge uh, desire to help enhance the awareness of how important it is really for everyone, but primarily women, because they're really underserved, um, how important it is to, to think about your brain health early because it can be reversed, right? There, there's things we can do in the early stage to reverse it. Once it gets further along, it could get much harder and maybe even impossible, right? So there's a sweet window in the very beginning where women are, oh, it's just, it's a senior moment. It's a blonde moment, uh, mom's brain, and they just slough it off and 10 more years go on. And unfortunately we lost the window now, right? So it's really important to understand that those things can happen. So I just have a, a, an interest uh, personally, you know, to, to, to put that information out to the world and have more women realize the importance of it and be armed with good knowledge and make, appropriate decisions for themselves. The, the third business actually came out of um, me doing my journey into the online space and having phone calls from different business owners and uh, healthcare physicians as well say, how are you doing this? What are you doing? Uh, can you help me? So my third business is called Habanova Consulting and uh, somehow I guess I've become a business coach um, in the online space due to just learning this information um, and being able to share back the things I've learned, help to shorten the journey on how to implement some things, how to maybe set up search and set up, you know, a, a membership or a course or something, or how to create their messaging or, or how to, you know, combine what they're doing in their practice that they still see patients in a brick and mortar practice and, um, you know, start to layer in the online components uh, to their business or other other um, business owners are in a completely different space altogether, uh, just needing to have a strategy, how, how to begin this journey and not get overwhelmed with the tech, how to make sense of their level of expertise and their knowledge base, which is like 
a, a phenomenal, right? Because they're experts in their field and, um, you know, how to package that up and serve that to their own community and, you know, and be known as an online expert. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed that for the last three years as well. And that's thanks to all the things I've learned through Searchy and Stu and various other online gurus uh, in the space that I took a lot of programs and, and studied <laughs> to learn how do we do this? And it's so much easier now than it, it's, it's, it's the easiest it's ever been. And I'm sure next year I'll even be easier because there's more and more updates and features and it's just the way of the future so it's important that we get kind of savvy on how to how to navigate our way in the business world online tatiana that is both um amazing first of all the fact that you're able to serve uh, your audience in so many different ways and uh, capture and help as many people as possible with uh, the expertise that you've collected uh, in your time in the field. And it can seem definitely overwhelming at times, especially when you're managing more than one online business. So it's something that Searchy has done to help you simplify that specific workload. I think for me, because um, I've you know, played with a variety of different, there's, there's tons of tools, right? So some are obviously necessary and then there's uh, variations on the themes out there, right? So there's thousands of tools. Uh, but I found when I, when I was working with Searchy and, and kind of finally kind of figured it all, especially that Planet Build It workshop was a real game changer for me. Uh, and I know Searchy has made tons of additions and features, so it's even easier now, uh, but it's so intuitive and it's so easy to put it together. So I think the ease of being able to create a video, throw it up into a searchy hub, just quickly, um, you know, design it, right? And it doesn't have to be super fancy. Uh, you know, you could just start to, we, we, we all, we, all our experts want to do, we just want to help people, right? If you're in this space and you're a heart-centered person and you care about your community and who you're serving, you, you want to be doing the work. You want to be talking to your community. You want to be making videos. You want to share content. You want to do one-on-ones. You want to do groups. You want to help people. And the last thing you want to do is get overwhelmed by the tech or discouraged, right? So Searchy has been amazing. I love the you know, that makes transcriptions. Uh, it's got the audio version for, for my community, particularly, they love the audio version of things that I create for them. Because again, light sensitivity, computer screens, things like that can be very demanding um, for some people who have brain fog. Not everyone, but for many, it can be. So having it as an audio component um, is wonderful. So I think search is just incredibly intuitive. And it really cuts my time in half of all the things I need to do. It's really, I mean, it's, it's sweet. <laughs> it's one of my favorite tools to use. <laughs> and I keep finding more and more ways to use it. You know, I just keep going to it to what can I do here? What can I do there? And I know um, the Searchy team is really amazing of all their use cases and the community is really great too. So I keep learning and learning from everyone as well on how best to, to continue to use that powerful tool. I think it just has a lot to offer. It's amazing to hear how you're able to apply all of these features in a way that I think really helped to drive your members forward. Uh, you spoke about the transcription feature. You spoke about the audio version being, I would say, it sounds like a crowd pleaser in terms of the functionality mm -hmm. that's automatically built into Searchy and doesn't require any additional steps specifically. Have you found that your members make more progress with Searchy since they have these opportunities to kind of lean into that curated experience that speaks to their learning styles and their needs? Yeah. So, I mean, depending on how you want to create your content as an as a educator or an online entrepreneur, uh, but what I think is wonderful about using Searchy, because I have used some other platforms, uh, so I can create this comparison because I, I have seen it play itself out. And I find the patients that have come through the Searchy experience of the same content, right? It's literally the same content, same videos <laughs> um, uploaded here or uploaded here. And because Searchy, the way Searchy is laid out, um, it's really easy for them to scroll and see where they need to go. I found other platforms really nest things. And when you click, um, click a button and let's say you're like, open this um, module, right? So module one, two, three, four, right? And then it opens up and then there'll be lessons underneath, right? Okay, fine. 
But what can happen is one's working memory in that time frame it took to go from that first web page to the second web page, and then things are nested. People kind of lose where they are in space, and then that's part of the brain fog aspect, right? It's just not, not being oriented where you are in space, and now you don't know where you are online. And the way search is laid out, it's all right there. So even though you might have to click into something and maybe see more, more of the training videos, or it's just more intuitive. It's easier on the brain. Uh, so yes, therefore, I do see uh, my members and patients make more progress because they're not taxed by the tech as a, as a consumer, right? Um, they can go through, they obviously log into their account and there everything is. It's so, it's all there. They don't have to lose that working memory as they, they're nesting and searching for things and getting lost. So I think that makes it easy for them. They're not intimidated by it and they enjoy going to it over and over again. I can see uh, by the stats on the back end, who watches what videos, how long they watch it, what happens when they jump off and things like that. So, you know, I'm always looking to also improve what I'm doing to make a better user experience. And I think Searchy is the platform I like to use the most because I see the benefit from, from the patient side. That's incredible. And I think going back to what you were talking, Tatiana, in terms of brain fog is as we spend, I think, more and more of our time online, we do come across the short term brain fog in many ways, just in terms of how spaces are set up. Um, we can come across it if a space isn't set up to, you know, support learning in a way that discourages brain fog. Is there any specific habit that anyone can start applying into their lives to maybe eliminate some of that brain fog that they experience online, both as a member? And do you yeah. find that uh, course and membership site owners and coaches can do anything to help uh, reduce the brain fog that they may even potentially inflict on their members? Yeah, so that's, uh, I'll answer that in, in two parts. So one, let's start with the course membership, uh, course creators, membership owners, uh, you know. Yes, I'm a huge advocate. I have been trying um, to get a lot of institutes, educational institutes to take on Searchy as their uh, platform that they use for some of their on-demand videos when they, when they do that because of, the ability, so let's make learning easy. So for someone who has learning challenges, because as they're learning, brain fog kicks in, and I'm being very general about this, but just for understanding sake, you know, someone's trying to learn one's content. So they're watching a video of, of a course creator or a membership owner, or whatever that topic is, and they're consuming the content and then brain fog kicks in and they have a little blip there and they lost what was happening and they can't reconnect the dots, right? But searchy, has the transcript, you could, you could, I, I like to read as I hear. I'm not very good auditorially. I know that I'm not a good auditory learner. So if I get only a talking head to me, I'm not retaining much. But if I get the closed captions, if I can see the transcript and I can see and follow along, if, you know, later I could read it even if I need to print it up and just reread it, right? Make some notes or whatever the case is. So the more you can create an integrative learning experience and connect as many senses, you know, visual, auditory, tactile, right? The more you can integrate that for your consumer, the better they're going to enjoy because you don't know how someone learns. You just have them as a member. If you don't ask that question, you don't know. Um, so I do think it's important for course creators, membership owners, online, even anyone who's just doing one-on-one -on -one work and uses, let's say, Zoom or something, right? You need to create a multi-dimensional environment and to think about that. Also keeping videos short and sweet. <laughs> Smaller, bite-sized, consumable pieces are good. Um, also, a lot of times people who have brain fog have tracking issues with their eyes. So when it comes to reading captions or reading transcripts, if you can increase the size of that a little bit, it'll be easier. Not because they need a bold, I won't get into the neuroscience, but it's not because they need it to be a bigger because they're they have poor like vision like 2020 for example no it's just that when letters are bigger it's easier for both eyes to stay conjugate to the words and sometimes one eye can move a little different than the other and that gets a little bit confusing in the brain so things to think about um the other part of the question was i think as a consumer right 
what can a consumer do? Uh, so I think in terms of what I find for a lot of people when they're using online learning for whatever thing that they're wanting to learn and a lot of times it's not what we can do to try to take away brain fog like oh, would take a supplement I mean obviously drink plenty of water make sure you're breathing well make sure you're eating these are you know fundamental things a lot of times it's the light and sound stimulations it's the tracking and following with the eyes so it's just a lot of brain processes that are going on that one could get really tired uh, or tuckered or all of a sudden now not be able to focus and now there's just, just thoughts going everywhere so I think just less is more sometimes we don't feel tired we want to push through and do a little bit more. Sometimes the videos that the online course creators create are 45 minutes and you really want to get through it all and, and complete it. And then you're taxed and burned out. So again, I think it's just when you're working on your stamina and you're working on having these brain pathways stay more viable and not kind of get fried out or fatigued little by little by little, right? So sometimes walking away and coming back taking deep breaths and just trying to stay relaxed um is helps a lot so <laughs> it's incredible and there's so much to take away from that just in terms of you know less is more is true for uh, how we learn it's also true for how we serve members as well and I really do feel like creating curated personalized support for everyone that we serve uh, can definitely make all of the difference and of course providing a surgery hub for each patient is I think a world-class experience just in terms of really focusing in on the progress that each member is making as well and yeah, I wanted to nice. mm -hmm. I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, the different relationships between working with patients versus working with other business professionals. Uh, what have you found in terms of how how you evolve how I'm gonna try again. What have you found in terms of how you evaluate progress between working with patients and working with other professionals? Because you have migrated, as we talked about, uh, your patient side of the business to the online business. And you also said that you're starting to venture out and actually support other businesses and other entrepreneurs as well. How has that shift been like for you? And what have you learned about yourself in the process? Okay. Um, well, I absolutely love it. <laughs> Obviously, the beginning was a little challenging with anything new. There's always a bit of a challenge. And, uh, but, you know, we roll up our sleeves, we ask good questions, we get good mentors, and we learn, right? Uh, so I have personally really enjoyed it. I love working with patients. I love seeing people make the health transformations and live lives that are happy and productive. Uh, so that really fulfills me. And, um, you know that I, I just I just love it. Uh, seeing their smiles, yes, helping them through the struggle moments, uh, of course, always being there. So that's very rewarding. And the way we monitor progress from the patient side is we're we're doing um, assessments. We're always doing a variety of cognitive assessments, brain health assessments, evaluations, and things so that we can show the patients their progress. Uh, and that's why, like for example, the hub is great because everything's documented. All the PDFs are there. All, all the things that they might need to download as journals or our documents or things that they might need, but we can also add things to there uh, to help them remember like how they're improving, right? So their sleep cycles and just their cognitive abilities and things like that. From the business coaching side, um, I, I never expected, I mean, I've, I've always had people come to me for business advice when I have my brick and mortar practice, but you know, as colleagues, we sit around and talk about our business and how sometimes best to navigate healthcare and, and things like that. I've always been in a cash-based practice. I never got involved with insurance. So I always had colleagues that, how are you doing that? How, Cause they'd love to do that too. They don't want to be caught up in the insurance world. So I do think there's a shift in the healthcare industry, nothing wrong with insurance companies whatsoever, you know? Uh, but I, I do think there are this opportunity for people to be able to expand what they're doing. So from the business coaching, I uh, have really grown to love it. Uh, I enjoy uh, finding out about the where a person is in their journey, what they're looking to do, what their goals are. So we'll sit down, do strategy sessions uh, and discuss what their, their goals are, how best to be there. I assess sort of what their tech 
knowledge bases and what they're comfortable with and either they maybe should get a VA or maybe outsource some parts of it so they don't have to do all of it themselves maybe some things they will uh, and it depends on what they want to do do they want to uh, just create more traffic to an existing business online or, or brick and mortar right so maybe we need to do more of a marketing campaign maybe they are looking to do a complement program to one of their uh, programs they already are doing with their their patients or inside their business maybe they want to create an online course and just make that available to the world, right? So being able to meet them where they're at and then working through uh, just the little obstacles and all the little things that they have to do to set, set everything up, right? So when you think about, for example, putting an online course or membership on Searchy, well, okay, I mean, you've got to talk about sort of the layout, right? The design of it. We've got to talk about what's the content. We have to talk about how are we going to create those modules? What should it look like? You know, there's email sequences, there's nurture sequences, there's funnels, <laughs> right? There's a variety of things that come together, right? Kind of like a cake. Uh, so we need to take a look at each of those ingredients, kind of string it together and based on their needs and goals, their lifestyle. I recently just actually mentored a a psychiatrist. And this was really fun because uh, she was very similar space as I was and doing a lot of similar things I was, but kind of was getting stuck and was able to kind of face, she loves to travel. Her and her family love to travel. They move like every six months and they travel. I, I, I just can't wrap my mind around that. And, but that's, that's what they love. They love to do that. And she wanted her online business to support that. So we structured it um, so that she could have a year long membership and that she would only have you know, four deliveries per month. Right. And only live once a month. So therefore she just has to worry if she could, you know, batch her content ahead of time for the other three weeks. And based on, you know, masterclass, maybe a guest and a Q and a, and, you know, maybe some other little deliverable and she, she's doing great now. So it was really fun to help her kind of work through the cobwebs and try to get her to, Set, set it up so that she could travel with, she's got young kids, they want to travel, enjoy the time and have fun. Yet, when it's time to do that live once a month, she's, she knows what her topic is, she's good to go, you know, and that's all she has to really kind of show up for and the rest of it runs on its own more or less, right? Uh, so that was really uh, exciting to see how she felt incredibly empowered and could live the life she wants. I mean, it's a laptop lifestyle, isn't it? Uh, and we have the best of both worlds of being able to do what we love but also serve the people and so she's she's very passionate she, she does a lot of social anxiety um and helps people with that topic that's incredible and it's incredible to hear you talk about you know the transformation that our clients go through when we give them that one-on-one -on -one support as well uh it can really bridge the gap between you know group resources other type of training that's available but the one-on-one -on -one coaching, I think, really goes a long way for helping people make very meaningful progress as well. And it was interesting to hear about that parallel just in terms of helping other business owners and what that means when less is more in terms of what we offer people as well. So I think getting clear, getting clarity in terms of who your market is, who you serve and how you serve them and with how many deliverables and how you batch that out, all of those small things definitely funnel in and helping us create a business that I think we can feel proud of at the end of the day. And I want to circle back to something that you were saying, Tatiana, in your last answer in terms of being able to expand what you're currently doing. How has Searchy helped you expand the recurring revenue that you're able to add to your business? So I'll add a little bit of context because at the beginning of our interview, you were talking about where your business was at at the point of the pandemic and um, being at that point with um, a challenge of how do I transition my brick and mortar business almost out of a need. So where are you now, uh, almost three years later, in terms of what that transformation has been like for you, specifically with Sochi? Sure. So, um, you know, I love my practice. I, I worked, you know, crazy hours uh, with patients, but I, I have so much joy. Now I get to 
still serve patients in a slightly different capacity because obviously it's more online now uh, with women's cognitive health, but I have a much better balanced lifestyle. I'm home. Um, I have my dogs right here. My golden retrievers are right here by my feet. I can take them for walks when I want to. I can, uh, you know, go work out when I want to. So just my overall level of satisfaction uh, in terms of just not being at the office for 12 14 hours per day, you know, and then coming home late at night, my poor dogs have been here all alone, you know, and I come home for lunch real quick for 10 minutes, let them out real quick, run back and, and stuff. So just the freedom of using Searchy as my main platform really to communicate with the world, uh, with my patients and the way I have it structured with the Palm Beach Brain Centers uh, practice. And then the other side of it with the um, women's brain health, which is that global aspect, I can now reach women all over the world. I mean, the whole entire world, right? And before in my practice, people would have to literally come to me. Some people did drive, some people flew, you know, in to see me. Yes, that that does happen. But I was really serving, you know, my little zip code, right? And that was plenty. There was obviously lots that I'd be able to do for my community. And I'm glad, but I can have such a greater reach now. And, you know, using Searchy for the podcast, using Searchy, uh, you know, for a, a website, just to have a front facing, you know, landing pages or, you know, just informational pages, having the inside part where you can have the courses. And I'm creating a little mini membership right now where people who are new to me and new to understanding brain fog, um, you know, for more of an awareness, uh, it's a front end membership, right? It's just like a little tiny mini membership. So you just dip their toe in and start to kind of experience a little what's going on, get more educated themselves. I mean, that's amazing. And if I can help more women just even make 1% change in their understanding of improving their cognitive health. Uh, we're living longer. We need our brains to be healthier longer. Uh, you know, there's a lot of demands on our systems uh, on many, many levels. And so we do have to take care of ourselves. And we're just getting to the brink of time where, where Alzheimer's is becoming an incredibly, um, well, it's a completely debilitating condition and disease, but I mean debilitating in the economy and the burden it places not only on the person, uh, but the family and the caregivers. It's really, um, you know, devastating. So why would we want to do that, right? So if I get a chance to help uh, women around the world and their families and extension, extension, extensions, right? I mean, that's exciting. <laughs> I can just make a greater impact at the time I have on this planet. And that makes my heart sing. So of course, I'm going to do it. And Searchy has made it easy for me. Um, you know, I have a history with brain injuries. Uh, so I, you know, practice a lot of what I preach and I have walked the walk as well, a days of having brain fog, cognitive decline and struggles and, and the like, and figuring out how to create a, a brain optimized lifestyle. And when you do that, uh, life is better, right? Life is happier when our brains are working, um, you know, when our hearts and our minds are together, our brain and bodies are functioning. Uh, we ourselves are happier. Uh, and we can also, you know, just help our families and we can help our communities. And so, you know, Searchy gives me that opportunity to do that and to do that with an ease in my own <laughs> comfort uh as as well so it's a joy right it's not a struggle i don't come to the tech the knowledge parts we know right but when we come and we're demanded by the tech it can dim our light and it can take away our desire to want to make change in the world and that's not good so searchy for me doesn't do it doesn't doesn't dim my light it makes it easy for me to share my content and you know just do what i can to help women around the world so it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Tatiana, that was incredibly inspiring, I think, for so many reasons. I think the biggest epiphany I received just from hearing you talk about, you know, your own experience and how that's kind of changed how you approach your, approach your business is there's really a gap in the market in terms of the resources available to entrepreneurs where you can find hundreds of articles on how to optimize a sales page how to identify your ideal customer avatar and how to put together a hub, for example. But there are far less resources about how to take care of yourself. 
And something that I think really that I've taken away from our conversation is this need to make sure that as we're positioning our online business to do that in a way where we are encouraging that balance. So I think as a way to wrap up this incredibly wonderful conversation, I'd love to hear uh, just from you, Tatiana, in terms of what does that balance look like for you? You've touched on it a little bit, but I'd love to hear more. And what is your advice to other entrepreneurs who are slowly learning how to take care of themselves and find that own balance in serving their passion, serving their members, but still making space for them? Absolutely. That's a really great point. And thank you for bringing that up because it is a passion of mine, uh, you know, working incredible amount of hours, um, enjoying it. Uh, luckily, I, I was in um, my brick and mortar practice, right? Oh, my, my um, golden retriever wants to come say hi. <laughs> he heard you say that we're wrapping it up. So he realized the Zoom call was coming close to an end. <laughs> One second, then he can't have a seat. Mommy will be with you in a moment. Okay, stay here. Um, so Yes, I have burnt myself out. I have uh, put myself in the hospital unknowingly because of the demands, the stress. As much as I loved it, it's, you know, burning the candles at both ends of, you know, it's, it's not good. Physician burnout and, and burnout in many businesses is true. And I think now with kind of almost feeling like I'm creating a whole nother chapter in this online space and uh, I, I can choose how I want to structure that. I could choose how I want to go about it. You know, learning from my mistakes in the past, knowing because of my history of some brain injuries, knowing what I need to do to stay healthy and strong moving forward. Um, yes, it's important that we think about ways we can serve, ways we can offer our expertise and help others, but also at the same time, not put ourselves behind the eight ball, right? So. I love working from home. Uh, you know, maybe some people prefer going somewhere else to do their virtual practice, but I, I love the fact that I, you know, if I do need to take a 20 minute meditation uh, to help with vagal nerve and calm down the brain and then I'm more productive for another eight hours, I could go do that. Um, I have a little couch right over there and I could just go chill out with the puppies for a little bit and, you know, have that ability to make meals, uh, be able to go for those walks or go work out in the mid part of the day. Uh, as we start to learn how our brains function, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck that nine to five, you're supposed to show up and work, 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 and then it's five o'clock and you're done. And our brains actually work in 90 minute peaks. So we really need to capitalize on when we are naturally uh, working at higher function and then it comes down a little bit but then it comes back again uh, another 30 minutes later so we have these little intervals where we do have these lulls and that's where we can do care for ourselves right if we can start learning how our rhythms of our brain works best for productivity we can work in our self-care um so i think it's important that as people are navigating into the online space uh you know, you're probably working full time and you're probably continuing to kind of spin the wheels of what you got going on because you can't let that drop because you don't have anything completely yet ready to go over on this other side. So you're kind of carrying both of the loads. And I have seen many entrepreneurs struggle during those times where they're trying to get the education and, and learn how to do something new, but yet still carry on from before, right? Um, so that's that could be a little demanding. So little by little, little by little. But I think being smart and how one sets things up to incorporate that time. I love the fact that I'm going to use search as because I know you guys don't work on weekends. I think sometimes even Fridays you take off, right? It's, it's a non- work day. I don't work Fridays. Fridays are a day off for me. Um, I now work 10 to five. No, I am not coming into practice at eight in the morning anymore and staying there till seven or eight o'clock at night. You know, I have these, you know, hard stops. Right. Um, and I used to think, oh my God, I wasn't helping enough people. Oh my God, I wouldn't be making enough money. Like, oh my God, I, I, I have to say no to someone and turn them away because I want to go home at five right? Oh, no, I'll stay. I should take them. They need, they, you know, they need more care. It's okay that I don't go work out or it's okay that I don't go get dinner. I'll get it later. I'll be fine. And no, <laughs> it's kind of like on the airplane. You have to put the mask on you before you put the mask on someone else. Right. And when you really care, want to help others, you sometimes want to help them more than you help yourself. And I've just learned through my own experience that that's not healthy um, at all. 
And we have this opportunity in the online space now to create that, that work balance. And why wouldn't we? Why shouldn't we, right? Um, we don't have to be working those 14 hour days anymore. And that old mentality, you know, from years ago is changing. And I think that's somewhat to the new um, generation and just the approaches of how they're looking at the world. It's trickling down into, um, you know, older generations. Um, and I think we should just embrace that fully and completely because really when you don't have your health, you have nothing. Absolutely. And I think so much does go back to our ability to embrace our power to change the industry and lead by example and set very strict boundaries. And it goes back to, I think what you were saying, Tatiana, in terms of as an entrepreneur, I can choose and I will choose and I will choose what it's best for me. I will put on my own mask first before I start to help other people. And that allows us to help um, create, I think, a richer experience from our, our members, but a richer life for us as well. Yeah, when you're, you know, when you're doing online stuff, it, sometimes it can be challenging because if you're speaking from stage or if you're in front of a small group, you can read the body language and you can gauge how you need to interact with the audience. But when you're sometimes interacting to just the camera and you're recording, so there's not really anyone on the other end, or you're doing a live where there may be lots of people on the other end, but you maybe can't quite see them unless maybe you're in a Zoom or you can see them that way. But let's say you're live streaming to a Facebook group or, or whatever the case is, you know, you have to muster up a lot of energy to to carry that, right? And even carrying on the monthly membership, for example, or the course, and to keep the energy high for all the participants as well, besides serving their needs, their questions, and educating them and supporting their journey. Um, that you know, that takes energy. Now, if it's heart centered, it shouldn't be taxing on you because it should cut just come from you, and you'd want to do that, so you would. But it's still has a cost to it. Yes. So we must uh, consider that as well. And I love, you know, the fact that Searchy and other uh, top industry, online industry uh, leaders are leading by example and to say, look, you can have a comfortable and lucrative financial lifestyle. You can have a healthy and family orientated uh, lifestyle, right? You don't have to be the slave to this online business and you know, if you have 300 members, 30 members, a thousand members, like you don't have to be drained by all of that. In fact, you could become invigorated if you set it up smartly, right? So knowing kind of what one's needs are and the things that are non-negotiable, right? And just set that up and not to be afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And going back to what you were talking about in terms of the energy, I think, this conversation has been incredibly uh, inspiring and empowering to, I think, helping our community unlock uh, maybe the philosophy behind, you know, how they run their business. And we're definitely with you in terms of, you know, leading the way in terms of how business can be done and should be done and encouraging other people to uh, serve their communities in the same way. So Tatiana, it has been such a pleasure uh, both hearing you speak and being able to pick your brain a little bit in terms of what it's like to make that transition from a brick and mortar business to an online practice and even scale your online practice and launch even more online businesses, but only in a way that, you know, allows you to still embrace that balance. Thank you so much, Polly. I really appreciate you reaching out and allowing me to uh, to connect with uh, you and Searchy and the Searchy community this way. And I certainly hope that any gems or uh, you know insights or inspiration uh, that you know people could gleam onto that and and make their lives more impactful and powerful for themselves, but obviously for their members as well, and just make the world a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't, can't talk at the end. Thank you so much. Speaking of notes, I literally doodled all, not doodled, but I wrote so many notes just around the questions that we were talking about, because I feel like there's so much here that we can unpack for our community. And uh, it really is, you know, a different type of epidemic, just in terms of how people sometimes run themselves into the ground. And there's so much connection between you know, maintaining cognitive function and also, again, setting those businesses in a way that 
uh, they actually support, you know, who we want to be and how we want to lead our lives. So this has been incredibly, incredibly valuable. Thank you so much. I'm glad that has served and anytime happy to help whenever I can.